Okay, we have on the board here a really interesting integral that I wanted to go over. We have the integral from 3 pi over 2 to pi of cosine of the 11th x dx. Okay, well, the big problem kind of staring at us is the large power on the cosine, right? If it was cosine squared, cosine cubed, we'd be fine. But with cosine of the 11th, we don't really want to um, use just like the normal double angle formulas or u substitution or anything like that. So what we want to look at is the power reduction formula for cosine. And here's that power reducing formula on the board here. I derived this in a previous video, so what I'll do is give a link in the description, but I'm not going to go over the derivation of this today. And so what this would allow us to do is, okay, so our n in this case is going to be 11. So what we could do is plug all this stuff in, plug our, plug our 11 in for everywhere you see an n. We'd have an expression here. We'd have 10 over 11 here, and then we'd have the cosine of 9. Then we could repeat that and we could do it on cosine of nine and we get the co integral of cosine of seven. Now we could do that, but that's gonna be very long and tedious and it would get much worse if cosine was like a hundred or a thousand. So I don't wanna use this five times, but we have a different way. So let's just look at the fact that it's a little different. We do have a definite integral and that's gonna help us out. So we have these bounds here so that means we're evaluating here from 3 pi over 2 to pi, pi and here. And the reason that's significant is because at every 90 degrees, this expression here is always going to be 0. So just notice when we plug in 3 pi over 2 um, in a cosine term, our cosine at 3 pi over 2 is 0. And whatever, it doesn't matter what everything else is, but that's going to zero everything out. And then when we evaluate the pi term, sine of pi is 0. So the classic case is when we're evaluating from pi over two to zero, that's the Wallace integral. But the same thing will work whenever our bounds are uh, multiples of 90 degrees. Okay, so in all those cases, once we know that this term is zero, and then we're just left dealing with this piece over here. Okay, so from here, what we wanna do, I'm just gonna have some notation. We're gonna call this I sub 11. And like this here is I sub N. So like this just being the same as our, n, our subscript being the n value. Then using this formula, we could just plug in here. So 11 minus one is 10 over 11. And then this is gonna be I sub n minus two. So here we're gonna have I nine, but that's still an integral. So, okay, what's I nine? Well, I nine is gonna be using the formula again, nine minus one is eight over nine I7, and then we could do the same thing for I7. So even though we zeroed out that other term and we've got this smaller expression, we still have to iterate over and over again. So this isn't so bad at 11, but this is still can be tedious if there's a lot of terms. So instead of working from our power 11 down, let's actually start at zero and work up. So if you look at our I0, we won't use this formula. We'll just look at what is this thing. So this is gonna be evaluating three pi over two to pi of cosine zero, which obviously we don't have to write because cosine of the zero is just one. So integrating one is just gonna be x from three pi over two to pi, and that's just gonna be three pi over two minus pi, which is pi over two. So this is gonna be our i zero value. Then let's do the same thing for i sub one. So this is gonna be three pi over two to pi of cosine one. We don't have to write the one, but just to show it, cosine one x, we know what that is. That integral is sine of the x. So we just have to evaluate sine at three pi over two minus sine at pi. This piece is zero. And this piece here is minus one. So we just have minus one for our i1 value. So we have our first two values. Now next we could go for i sub two, but you'll notice the sequence when we're looking at i11, we went to the next one down subtracting two is i sub nine, i sub seven, i sub five, all odd numbers. So actually we don't have to worry ourselves with even right now, we just need to look at the odd numbers. So what I'm gonna do is go from i1 to i3. So i3, and then we'll go back to our formula three minus one is two, n is three times i1, because that's our n minus two here, okay? 
So this is going to be 2 thirds times minus 1. So next let's look at I5. I5 is going to be using the formula again, 4 over 5 I3, but I3 is right here. So we have 4 over 5 times 2 over 3 times negative 1. Let's do one more. We'll do I sub 7, and that's going to be 6 over 7 I sub 5, and that's just going to be 6 over 7 times all this business, 4 over 5, 2 over 3, negative 1. Now clearly we only have two more to go, so we could get all the way to cosine 11. 11 is not that bad. I'm just imagining what would happen if it was a thousand or a million or a billion. <laughs> so instead of doing that, let's just notice what's going on here. Six times four times two, that's actually six double factorial. And over seven times five times three, that's actually seven double factorial. So I recently did a couple of videos on double factorial. I'll provide a link in the description. This will give some background on this, but what we have for our general formula here is for I sub n is this is gonna be n minus one double factorial over n double factorial times our, for the odd case, this is I sub one. If it was even, we would be using our I sub zero. So then using that, let's just find our I sub 11. That's the value we really want, right? That's our goal. So for I 11, we're going to have 10 double factorial over 11 double factorial. Um, and our I 1 is negative 1. Okay, so now we have, this is actually our answer, negative 10 double factorial over 11 double factorial. But you may say, I don't really like having double factorials in my answer. I want to see this a little different. So let's look at a different way to express this. In one of those previous double factorial videos, I defined, I derived this formula here on the right. So again, there'll be a link in the description to that. Let's just use this to rewrite the whole thing. So our, um, our n minus one is gonna be 10. So we're gonna have two to the 10. And then k, k is gonna be n minus one over two. So in this case, that's gonna be five. So we're gonna have so 11 minus one is 10, divided by two is five, so we're gonna have Five factorial, five factorial over n, which is 11 factorial. And so this would be another way to express that, this answer. And finally, if you wanted, you could do all the cancellation with these factorials and reduce this further. I did that, and when I what I got was minus 256, which is 2 to the 8th over 693 is what happens when you cancel out all the fives. And so really our fraction answer would be minus 256 over 693. Got this problem from my quiz, power reduction integrals. I'll provide a link in the description. Right now it just has examples like this, sine and cosine, but I'm gonna add some more things to it. So we'll stop it there. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.